Hello everyone and welcome to our calculus notes for section 7.5. Today we're going to be talking about integration using partial fractions. So we can integrate rational functions that have factorable denominators by breaking a rational function into simpler rational functions which you actually can integrate using basic integration formulas. So let me show you what I mean. If we look at this integration problem here, 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6, there's actually no known formula that we can use to integrate this. So we're kind of stuck for now. Let's go ahead and take a look at this example over here. Can we integrate this function? First thing we would do is try to split up these integrals, so 1 over x minus 3 dx, and then we would have minus the integral of 1 over x minus 2 dx. Now looking at this, we do have a known formula, so 1 over x minus 3, that integral would just be the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 3, and then 1 over x minus 2 would just be the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2. And of course plus c right there. Okay, now as we explore this further, let's take a look at what that 1 over x minus 3 minus 1 over x minus 2 would turn into if we actually added that together. Okay, so we need common denominators here. Okay, on the left we're going to multiply by x minus 2 over x minus 2 and on the right we're actually going to multiply by x minus 3 over x minus 3. Okay so this turns into well if we multiply here x minus 2 and then if we multiply in the bottom we're going to get our common denominator of x minus 2 times x minus 3 and then for the second part here if we multiply on top we get minus from that minus sign right there and then x minus 3 over and then on the bottom if we multiply we're going to get that common denominator x minus 2 times x minus 3 And now, because we have this common denominator here, we can actually subtract the 2. So we get x minus 2 minus, well I'm going to change that to a plus, change that to a minus, change that to a plus. So x minus x is gone, and then negative 2 plus 3 equals 1. So we actually get 1 over x minus 2 times x minus 3. And let's go ahead and multiply those two factors here. So here we're going to get 1 over, well, x times x is x squared. And then x times negative 3 is minus 3x. And then negative 2 times x is minus 2x. And then minus 2 times negative 3 is plus 6. And we'll combine these like terms here. And so we get 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. Now, if we compare this function to this function, we'll see that they are the same. 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. And if we go all the way back to here, this function and this function are the same. So that means if I know the definite integral for this one is the natural log of x minus 3 minus the natural log of x minus 2, that means that this function, the integral, is also going to be the same. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense, and you can tell that those two equations are the same, and so that they're going to have the same integral. 
Well, one of them we were able to find because these were simpler rational expressions. And we could actually find uh, the integral of each of them. So what we're going to try to do, what this whole lesson is all about, is if we can expand this fraction to look like this, then we can integrate this problem right here. Okay, so let's talk about partial fraction expansion. What this is, is the opposite process of adding rational expressions. Okay, so you can see through this process, we went this way. What we want to be able to do now is go backwards. And we want to be able to get to this. All right, so basically we're going to take a look at all of these steps along the way, how we can get right back to here. Okay, so here's the process. We're going to use long division if the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the numerator. And this should actually say denominator right here. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> degree of the numerator is larger than degree of the numerator. So it is. If the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator, then you have to use long division first. The second thing that you have to be able to do is factor the denominator. So the denominator has to be factorable. Now, in step three, we have two different things we're looking at. If we have distinct linear factors, we are going to make one fraction per factor. And if we have repeating linear factors, we're going to use one fraction per each power of each factor. And we'll see what that means in a second. For step four, then you want to multiply by a common denominator. So you have to find what that would be and then multiply by it. Step five, you want to solve uh, by substituting roots into factors. And then step six, you want to substitute back into the integral and then be able to integrate. Okay, so we'll mark these steps as we go along so that you can track them back as needed. So let's take a look at example one. It says determine each indefinite integral using partial fractions. So we've seen this integral before, the integral of 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. It's what we did in our first example. So we know what the answer should look like, but let's talk about how to get there. So first, step one, we have to see, are we going to need to do long division? Well, the degree of the numerator is 0, and the degree of the denominator is 2. So we don't have division here. So no division needed. Step two, what we want to be able to do is factor the denominator. So let's go ahead and factor this here. And let's go ahead and leave the rational expression here. So we want to be able to factor this. So we have x times x. And then what multiplies to 6 and adds to negative 5? Well, negative 2 and negative 3. So there's step two, and we're good to go. Now step three asks, are these distinct linear factors or are they repeating? Well, x minus two and x minus three are different, so these are distinct linear factors. And what that means is we're gonna have one fraction per factor. Okay, so we're gonna be able to break this up, we're gonna expand it, and we're gonna say that we're gonna do a over x minus two, and then plus b over x minus 3. So here we have one fraction per factor. Okay, and that was step 3 right there. Okay, so now I have this equation and basically what I want to try to do is find the values here for A and B. So to be able to do this, the uh, first thing I want to do is try to get rid of the fractions. So what I'm going to do is multiply uh, the left side of this equation by the denominator here. Okay, so essentially that's going to end up canceling out. 
And what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So I'm going to also multiply the right side here by that common denominator. Okay, and this right here is step four. So now we can see on the left side of the equation, all I have is one. And now let's deal with the right side of the equation. So if we're going to multiply x minus 2 times x minus 3 by a over x minus 2, you can see the x minus 2s are going to be canceling out, and all we're going to be left with is a times x minus 3. And now when we multiply by b over x minus 3, now the x minus 3s are going to cancel out, and we'll be left with b times x minus 2. Okay, now what we have here is called the basic equation. So when you multiply by your common denominator, it's going to give you what we call a basic equation. And here's that equation. Okay, now the way I like to solve this is by trying to get one of these factors to equal zero so that the a value will cancel out and we would be able to then solve for the b value. Okay, so what x value would let this factor go to zero? Well, let's go ahead and let x equal three. So if we let x equal three, the equation now would be one equals a times 3 minus 3, which is 0, plus b times 3 minus 2. And we can solve this. So 1 equals, now well, this becomes 0. And then we have b times 3 minus 2, which is 1. And so all in all, we get b equals 1. Okay, so we've solved for our first one there. And now what we want to do is try to get rid of this second factor so that we can solve for a. Okay, so to be able to do that, I'm going to let x equal 2. And so now our equation is going to be 1 equals a times 2 minus 3 plus b times 2 minus 2, and you're going to see that this cancels out here, and we have a times negative 1, and so all in all, a is going to equal negative 1. All right, so all of this going on right here was step number 5. Okay, so we did solve for our A and our B right here. Okay, so step six says substitute back into the integral and integrate. So if we take a look at this integral, the very first thing we want to do is to rewrite this using our partial fraction expansion. So if we look down here, we know that 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 1 over x minus 2 times x minus 3, which equals a over x minus 2 plus b over x minus 3. So this integral would also equal the integral of a over x minus 2 with respect to x plus the integral of b over x minus 3 with respect to x. Okay, so here is where the substitution comes in. So we need to replace a with negative 1 and b with 1. So this equals integral of negative 1 over x minus 2 
with respect to x plus the integral of 1 over x minus 3 with respect to x. So now we can evaluate this integral. So we get the negative natural log of the absolute value of x minus 2 plus natural log of the absolute value of x minus 3 and plus c. All right, so here would be our final answer. Okay, so all of this going along here is step six. So I'll just call it step six right here, substituting in for a and b. And if we compare our answer at the beginning, you can see that we did get the same answer there. All right, so that's using partial fraction expansion to help with integration.